Hello folks, today is Friday, October 20th, 2017. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino. Welcome to the Friday Show, where we talk about video game stuff that has been going on this week. And who oh boy, there's a lot to get into. We're almost done moving. Apologize, pardon for the mess. But let's get into it. Let's talk about my favorite thing in the world, Star Wars. But it's terrible news. It looks like the visceral game Star Wars project, the single player adventure that has been teased and been worked on since 2013, is kind of canceled. The biggest thing is that EA came out and said they are shutting down Visceral Games, which is huge because that is the influential studios behind Dead Space. So that right off the bat is terrible because EA does have a habit of gobbling up studios and then spitting them out uh, as soulless corpses. And it looks like that's happening with Visceral. But not only that, they have come out and confirmed that the Star Wars game that Amy Hennig, the former Naughty Dog lead behind the Uncharted games, and her team were working on at Visceral is going to be re worked and worked on by a different internal EA studio. It's a shame too because she came off like such a big Star Wars fan. You know, yeah. so like I was like, this is gonna be she good. She was so excited to be doing it. What is going on with her as a project lead? Amy Hennig herself is still kind of up in the air at the time of making this video. But really, the thing we have to acknowledge and the thing that has been setting the internet ablaze is the statement that EA put out talking about reworking this Star Wars project. It's getting quote unquote a significant change, and they said throughout the development process, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. <laughs> it has become clear to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we need to pivot the design. Here's where it gets interesting. Importantly, we are shifting the game to be a more broader experience that allows for more variety and player agency, leaning into the capabilities of our engine and reimagining central elements of the game to give players a Star Wars adventure of greater depth and breadth to explore. The game was originally supposed to drop in late 2018, 2019. Now it's delayed indefinitely. But this statement right here has led to a lot of speculation with people seeing that it sounds from the jargon that EA wants to pivot it towards making a destiny type game a game that they can continually have players play and they can continue to monetize for more than just a flash in the pan sale of like a year and i don't know about you guys as someone who likes destiny who was okay with the division and likes those style of games I did not want that from this at all, Jesus. The language, the writing on the wall, and just the state of the industry very much tells that they wanted to move away from an Uncharted style, you know, single player action adventure game and move towards something that they can make more money off of. Now we've heard conflicting reports, like someone like Jason Schreier has come out and said that he has heard that it hasn't been canceled just because it was a single player game. He also added that apparently the game was a mess and the company wouldn't just come out and say the game was a complete mess, but apparently that led to some of these changes. We don't know for sure, but sometimes this sources are pretty good. But we still really have no idea what they're thinking with this, but I am just very bummed because I've been hanging on to this project ever since it was like 13, 13, way back in the day. Not only that, the bigger conversation that people have been having, are, are single player games dying? Are they going the way of the Dodo? Most recently, lately, it just seems like all these studios are straying away from single player games, or if they are doing it, they're loading them with microtransactions. It seems like they are on their way out. And if you think that, that's fine, because it does seem like the industry is moving away from that in a sense. And that's terrible but to, I would also like to direct you to all the wonderful single-player games that we have still been getting. Neo, Nier Automata sold millions. Uh, the Tomb Raider games have been doing very well. Uncharted. The Dark Souls games are absolutely huge. I don't think single-player games are going away anytime soon. I, I do... I am kind of worried, but I'm not really calling doom and gloom just yet. But what about you guys? Not only that, but I think this is worth acknowledging. I link it in the description below. It's a video from Eurogamer by Chris Bratt, who did some investigating. Uh, it's a very good video. It goes into the details behind Dead Space 3 and the tensions between Visceral and EA. Visceral had one idea for making another scary Dead Space game, but EA wanted to add more opportunities to make money and co-op and stuff like that within the game, and that really affected the process. So we could see the workings of what was going on a little bit through this. Thankfully, we're still getting Star Wars games, but we're going to keep our eye on this development. But m moving on to Grand Theft Auto. Can we talk about this? Grand Theft Auto Online is still being supported constantly, uh, but this time, look at this mode. The latest update just added these transform races, and these are incredibly impressive. This is not half-assed stuff. These are essentially checkpoint races where every time you hit a checkpoint, your vehicle transforms into a completely different vehicle. Like, you can go from airplane to jet ski, or car to boat, or car to plane. You know, as much as people are kind of pissed, and 
I am myself that they aren't really working on single player stuff for Grand Theft Auto V, it's nice to see that they're not phoning it in. Also, in a surprise move that I didn't really expect, Sony announced an officially licensed PlayStation controller that is a DualShock 4 controller, uh, but a miniaturized version. It's being manufactured through Hori, but it is official, and it's actually wired. It's garnered towards younger players, but also, more importantly, uh, disabled gamers uh, can actually get their hands on smaller controllers, and in some cases, it's more useful for them, and I think this is cool. So it's perfect for uh, co-op with kids in games like Knack 2. Shut up. But going back into shady and terrible in this story, I promise it's not all bad news this week. Uh, we have to talk about uh, this patent that Glixel actually unearthed. It's an Activision patent basically describing a concept of using matchmaking to stimulate players to buy stuff. This patent, the way it's broken down, is essentially designed to use the matchmaking algorithm to encourage and influence players spending money on microtransactions. The way it works and the way it's actually outlined is it would essentially pair you up with another player in a game mode that has much better equipment than you or is a higher level than you uh, with in-game purchased items to essentially influence you to see that cooler guy and go, oh, I want stuff like that, and then prompt you to buy them. Now, this very much goes into consumer behavior territory in terms of like how grocery stores uh, align certain shelves in certain places because people have certain buying habits. But this just seems kind of uh, shady, sketchy, I'm, I can't even come up with the amount of words. Activision jumped right on this though when this news broke and says that they have not implemented this in any games yet, but they could. So, I don't know, be aware, that's crazy. But moving on to something more positive, every week we like to try and highlight weird, crazy things that people do with games, so check out this dude, he's an absolute god. This Twitch streamer actually beat Cuphead with a DDR dance pad. And he, the actual metal one, the real thing. He had the two player one and he did it. Now he essentially had his feet between the two pads so he wasn't technically dancing his way to victory, but God damn, shout out to Peking Boo for doing this. He did it all through normal difficulty and I am so impressed. I don't know if you've played Cuphead, but that game is pretty intense and you gotta be pretty on it. So to do that with your feet, I applaud you, sir. But speaking of things you should check out, I don't know if you guys missed this like two weeks ago, but I started kind of like Jake's Book Club where I essentially recommend some good long reads about gaming because the way I look at it, we spent so much time talking about gaming here, you may as well be well read on it, right? So here I linked the oral history of Halo. This isn't a new piece, this is from a few months back, but I don't think enough people got to read it. It's very long, it's very comprehensive, and it basically details the history of the Halo games internally with Bungie, with all the people that worked on the games, and there's some really interesting shit going on there. I even even recommend it even if you're not a fan of Halo it's just good game history stuff but something that crossed our radar was this headline that stated that player unknowns battlegrounds anti-cheat system is banning something like 6,000 players a day apparently the game is experiencing that many cheaters and this cheat system is knocking them out now if you think about it the game has sold over 10 million units so that's kind of a drop in the pan but that's why that number seems so high the cheat tech backing the game battle eye has tweeted out and confirmed that it averages between 6,000 and 13,000 players a day. Most of them are confirmed cheaters originating from China. Which begs the question, China, why are you doing that, man? But wherever the cheaters are from, that's an insane number, and it's good to see it's working, I guess. I mean, I've, I haven't come across any cheaters, have you? No. No? That's a good job. Also, in case you missed it, not a huge week for trailers, but we did talk about Star Wars. Uh, we did get another Star Wars Battlefront 2 story trailer. And I've been saying this, some of you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but I really wanna play the game for the single player. I'm kinda like, you know, checked out of the multiplayer with everything going on, but I need that lore. I need that sweet Star Wars lore. <laughs> I'm so sad. And for you Nintendo Switch folks, I don't know if you missed this, but the Nintendo Switch got a pretty big software update that allows you to record 30 seconds of gameplay previous for certain games, not all games, but like Legend of Zelda you can. And not only that, the ability to transfer your game saves is now a thing, but there is a huge, huge caveat here. You can't actually uh, back it up, essentially. You can only transfer it from one console to another, and that's it, like completely concrete. So essentially, if you lose your Nintendo Switch or if it completely breaks, you still don't have access to those saves, you're shit out of luck. It's, it's a half step. Nintendo's trying, okay? Come on, guys. Get there. But speaking of a half step and trying to get there, they also added support for wireless headphones. Not good Bluetooth integration like you would expect. You still have to use, like, a dongle for wireless headsets, but we're halfway there, so, uh, you know, come on. 
Come on, Nintendo. Good job, but keep going. And lastly, like a month or so ago, we launched Game Ranks Espanol. We started it out, we got your feedback. It wasn't perfect for some of you guys. So we went back to the drawing board and we've been putting out some new content there. So if you haven't checked it out already, if you speak Spanish, I suggest you should and give us more feedback. We also did a giveaway contest over there and we have to still announce the last winner. So the winner is this person right here. Congratulations. We're going to be getting in touch with you via the Spanish channel to figure out how we can send you your console. But now, of course, we got to go into the regular console giveaway we do every single week. You know the way it works. There's a link below. You sign up, you enter once, then you're entered for good. And then every single week, we close our eyes and randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. And this week's winner is going to be this cat right here. Congratulations. Once again, be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, keep an eye on your spam, because we're going to be reaching out to you soon to figure out how we can send you your free shit. But now we got to talk about everything going on this week. There is quite a bit to chew on. First and foremost, Star Wars. The fact that it is pivoting to be a different type of game. Do you think this is the end of single player games as we know it? And what do you want the Star Wars game to become if you are a Star Wars fan? Let's talk about that. Also, have you ever encountered a cheater in PUBG? Because we haven't. Uh, it seems like that cheat tech is working really good. Also, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with our glitch videos, but we are now accepting glitches, if you have any, for WWE 2K18. That game is a total mess, so it's probably going to be a shit show. If you have something, send it to us. We have a link in the description. That's where you can send us your video clips. Uh, but also, we got to talk about Activision essentially uh, moving the goalposts for how things are done with microtransactions. How much crappier can it really get, and will they go through with it? Let's talk about it. I want to know how you guys feel, because this is a conversation. I'll be down there talking with you guys in the comments as much as possible, but if you got anything else from me, you know where to find me. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino. But as always, thank you guys so much for coming around. You know, clicking the like button does help us out. We really appreciate it over here, because it helps us do more. Subscribing, too, is really good if you haven't already, because we put out new videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.